Hey guys, it's Data. Today I'm going to review for you the Amazon Fire TV stick. Not that long ago I did a review for the Amazon Fire TV. That's this unit right here under the monitor. And I did that on XDA. You guys could check out. I'll give you guys a link to the actual video under the description, of course, in the description. Uh, but today we're going to look at the Amazon Fire TV stick. This is Amazon's offering in, comp in competition, I guess, to the Chromecast. Let's check it out. So first thing, the box itself is actually smaller. As we would expect, this is actually just a smaller connection. We're gonna read real quick what the descriptions are. We have obviously Dolby surround sound, dual core, this is a dual core processor in here, dual band Wi-Fi, so we have, uh, I guess it's Wi-Fi G and N, uh, and then 1080p HD quality display. So we're able to get the 1080p display and it's gonna work very good and it's gonna start video. We're gonna have a lot of very similar uh, you know, features that we got directly with the Amazon Fire TV. We'll go ahead. And we'll break this little sticker here, take out the box, let's put this right here. And the box itself, of course, says the same thing. Amazon's very good at branding. I'm not sure if you guys can see that here. And I'll do the little reflection right here. Amazon Fire TV stick. We'll open up the box. And we're greeted with what looks like pretty much similar to the actual remote that we had from the first Amazon Fire TV. Uh, and I say that because that one is a Fire TV. So we'll go ahead and take out the plastic wrapping here. And actually, it does look a little different. There's a little plastic wrapper right here on the actual circular display uh, clicker. We'll go ahead and bring up the old one. So the Fire TV stick is longer. It feels heavier, actually. It has a much better feel to it. It has more non-slippery, and this is more of a plasticky feel. So it looks like the quality of the material kind of went down a little bit. Also, if you noticed, the microphone went away. I guess we'll figure out when we get there as far as how we're gonna able, uh, uh, work with it. But the main thing also is we still have these functionalities, the play, the back, the forward, and all of the different other things. So overall, it looks pretty much the same. I'll put this one back here, just to keep it as a point of reference. And I'm sure the batteries are inside the box. And we'll put that in once we get to that level. So we'll put the remote, we'll put there, and here is the star of the show, the Amazon Fire TV stick. Pretty much looks, about the, I mean, it's what you would expect when you say the word stick. It looks like a really big USB drive. Again, Amazon all over it. I'm sure you guys could see that in the disk right there. And then you have your power connector is on the side. So this one uses a regular micro USB cable connector uh, where the Fire TV uses actually an actual plug. So it's a proprietary on the Fire, T Fire TV with the stick, any USB cable for an Android device, almost all my Android devices, uh, this will be fine. So we'll put that down here. We'll see what's sort of, again left over for us in the box. We have, of course, the manual. No need to work on that right now. Oh, here it is, the wall wart. A uh, very small, a very, very compact uh, Amazon wall wart. We'll open that up real quick and see what we have as far as power requirements. I'm sure it's minimal since it's gonna just power the Amazon Fire TV. We'll put this on the side here. And let me read this since it's actually very small and of course written in a very, very... So uh, what we have here is five volt at one amp. So it's a one amp charger uh, for the actual Fire TV. So not a big surprise since most USB connectors right now will provide that power. We have a, an actual USB cable. This is the cable itself that would plug it into the actual unit. And a set of AA batteries to power our of course, they are Amazon batteries. They are Amazon Basics batteries. So if you've ever wanted them, this is what they look like. We'll put those in. Actually, so far it's pretty simple. I know it's probably taking us a little longer than what we'd, we'd expect, but here it is, all done. And then we have a, an extension for the HDMI cable. This is just to allow us to be able to kind of, if we get into a position where we need to plug this in at an angle or something, if your TV is mounted to a, to a wall, uh, this is perfect. It'll actually work. And I actually have one back there. So we'll go ahead and switch the angle. Make sure once you have an actual setup, everything and connected everything to the TV that you need to download one more application. This will help you greatly in interfacing with the actual Fire TV. This is called the Fire TV Remote. It works with the existing Fire TV as well now with the recent update. It says Fire TV Stick Support. 
Fire TV support coming on November 26th. Well, I guess we're a little bit early. We got that actually. The first thing we want to do is I want to kind of give you a heads up. I did connect the actual Fire TV stick to the monitor. I am not running it using the actual wall wart that came with it. I'm using the USB cable to get it powered directly out of the, uh, the actual USB hub that I have connected to the monitor. So the main benefit of it, of course, is it runs exactly like a Chromecast, which is no big surprise. It can pull power from USB. If your TV has USB, you should be able to pull power off of it. Now, first thing is we will agree it with just a regular splash screen. It says Amazon Fire TV stick. Now it's asking us, it's looking for a remote. It's going to go ahead and hit the home button. Here it says it is recommended to use the power adapter. We're going to go ahead and hit play. We'll skip that. Scanning for network. This is going to look for our networks over here. And you can see it found the network connected. It's connecting. It's keep working through the process, checking for updates. Now, if it's any surprise, this is pre-configured to my Amazon account as it was the Fire TV. When you're purchasing things from Amazon, Amazon likes to kind of set things up in advance. So if you notice, there was no login to Amazon kind of situation. It's checking for updates, it's going through, and we can see the little Amazon stick, to, uh, you know, picture on the monitor itself. We'll give it a second. Hopefully there's no, not that many updates. It just got released. Actually, it's ahead of schedule. It's supposed to come out in December, and we just got it in mid-November, which is nice. Okay, so we're done with the update itself. It actually just restarted and we're starting with the actual, we get, you know, greet it with the Amazon logo. The main thing, of course, now what's gonna happen is that we're gonna go through and get the splash screen for the Amazon Fire TV stick. It recognizes it and says exactly what it is. And right off the bat, I wanna make sure, yes, in the beginning, I kinda mentioned a couple of times, this is Amazon's offering to compete with the Chromecast. Well, there's a different category here. Chromecast is really more of a receiving end type of a device, meaning you can't really use anything to control it. Uh, you can broadcast to it, you can send things to it, and it will display whatever your device is actually playing. Where with the Amazon Fire TV Stick, you actually have a remote. You're able to use it to control the media. You're able to control what you're actually wanting to start. So you don't need a device to be able to do it. The app on the device is kind of nice to have, but not necessary. And it's successfully registered directly to Amazon as it's, yes, this is TK. As I said, they pre-configure, Amazon likes to pre-configure your devices. And if you don't, you can always change it at that point. Once we're set up, it's actually going to take us... Hello, a... and welcome to your new Amazon Fire TV stick. <laughs> There's nowhere to go around the welcome video. You have to keep watching it. And if you go back to change the registry, the actual account, it takes you back and it replays the video exactly where you left off. So here we go. Let's get started. Navigating is easy. And soon, from the Apple app store. You can use the app to nap. So, yes, there apparently is no straight way to disable the video from playing, but if you have the Amazon TV, Fire TV Stick app on your device and you try to connect it directly to the actual Fire TV, it stops the video in midstream and gives you a put in the pin. Once you do that, it skips over to the parental control option and we're done. So. You can always go back and watch the video, the getting started video, but the main benefit of this, which I really like about the way Amazon does some things, is it already downloaded everything I already had. So the movies I've been watching on my regular Fire TV is already in here. My video library, these are the, you know, I was watching True, uh, True Blood, Orphan Black, of course, and let's see if the games came up. Sure enough, some of the games I've been playing on, it, it, it really is very, very nice. And as far as application, it knows I, I like to play Netflix, so it still has the cloud option, which means this is not directly downloaded. So we'll be able to download that and play. My only concern essentially is once we go to search, yeah, contextual search. Okay, so this is where it kind of gets a little bit interesting. The remote lost the voice search functionality. We don't have that on. If I scroll all the way to the top, I don't even get the option to actually use my voice. It only has the ability to type. Of course, once you pair it with the actual application itself, it says connecting, you pull this down, voice search is brought back again. So the ability to bring it back is purely through your Android device, which has a microphone. This does not have a microphone. It's smaller. It's not the same. So just keep in mind the functionality changes and your device has to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your Fire TV. So that's one of the things you want to keep in mind. And, but then again, you do end up having the ability of getting voice search again. Overall, looks about the same functionality. Um, as far as the way to interact with it and play with it, it gives you the same functions. It's really, really nice. So if we go down to that settings uh, and you get all the same functionalities, help, system, 
We'll look at the system itself, network, it's connected, developer options, we don't really need this right now. Uh, but about, we'll go in. So storage capacity, it's a five, almost six gigs uh, of storage, of that only five gigs available for us as a user. Obviously this is my user software version. It's the latest that it's been installed. Current date, network controllers, it only recognizes one, gives me my network ID and check for system. Yeah, we're in this end. So it keeps telling you if you have it connected via USB that you need to connect it to a regular uh, wall wart, which is the one that they provide you. So if you have the option, please do so. If you don't, it does work. It doesn't have a big issue with it. Click me home, takes us back. And overall, very nice. I, I like the functionality. I like the way it works. It brings in everything that you do, you know, you normally would use. So if I go down to my apps, which is generally what I usually go, and I'll go Netflix and I'll say downloading, it's added to the queue. Then I can go, I can download Plex, I can download uh, all the other ones, YouTube, of course, Vimeo, Crackle, Hulu Plus is one of the other ones I like, Pandora, and then uh, Showtime, of course. All of these things will actually, oops, we'll go back. Hmm. Let's go through. Gives us the ability of calibrating our screen. And actually we'll go home. So overall, it did finally download Netflix for me and I'll go in and actually, you know, actually I'm interested to see it. Does it recognize my username and password from my other account or do I have to actually put that in again? No, good, okay. So one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't actually store your information, but the beauty of it, of course, is I can just go down to Prime Video and all the Prime TV ch channels are actually in. Actually, let's do a quick uh, video test. I'm interested to see how quickly this starts. So from, from the point of hitting start, now. I have to say, it is very quick. It loads videos much, much faster, and it did play right away, which is something I wasn't expecting. We'll try one more video just for the sake of testing. This is uh, Clerks. No, it's not Clerks. And no, Workaholics. So there is a slight loading, but nothing big. Overall, very nice. I like it. Hope you guys like this too. It's a little bit of a longer video, but I wanted to kind of go through and show you guys the differences between the two. Um, you do have the functionalities, of course, of being able to play videos as you want and what you'd like to play. But keep in mind, uh, it's different than the Fire TV. There is no USB connections in the back. This is purely a, a, a TV stick type of a connection. Uh, you have power into it. You can control it. The Amazon app for Fire TV on your device or your Android device is definitely a must when you're using this. Um, overall, it works pretty good. It's great for traveling. It's small. It's simple to use. And you don't necessarily have to worry about, you know, your device to be able to initiate content. As long as you connect it to a network with the remote, you're actually pretty much set. You can go to a hotel room, plug it in, and just enjoy it. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of things. But again, I think in the, for, the, for the price point, really, when you look at it, uh, it's really nice. But if you have Chromecast and you're comfortable in that device, this isn't really going to sway you away from it. This is more if you're into the Amazon ecosystem. So if you have Amazon Prime, you're subscribing to them, you use their video applications, this is great to be able to connect to that. You get Hulu, you get Netflix, HBO, I think, is also kind of in the mix. So you get a lot more functionalities out of it outside of obviously Chromecast functionality, which is you're able to actually use that. But again, Chromecast kind of mimics a lot of the things that are already on Fire TV. And even T uh, Google now released a, Fire, a Google TV, which is kind of in the same way it works with this Amazon Fire TV actually does. And about the same price point, about a hundred bucks. As usual, like and subscribe to this channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I will see you guys soon.